Hi guys, I'm Gracie and I'm Damon. Welcome, Welcome to, to today's, today's video. video. So uh, last time we said that we're going to read a comment from the last video that Ilitubamba. Mm. I can't believe I'm talking to Swahili. But um, so the comment that we liked the most was Caroline Kamande who said, I love that you guys go to therapy as a couple. Yes, we do go to therapy as a couple. If you do not know, oh, we did go to therapy as a couple. Yeah. We've not done it in like six months. Um, yeah. But it, it, it was really, really important for us and our Very. foundation of the first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. We felt that it was necessary and it really molded us into having like some stableness on yeah. the marriage because the first year can be a bit all over the place so yeah. that helped us stabilize and we would advise um for anybody who is getting into marriage get a therapist as mm. soon as you come from your honeymoon therapy yeah very fast true it's very yeah, important but it, it really really helped us it is as a man it takes a lot of your energy and your courage and submission and humility for you to go <laughs> but trust me it's not as bad as as you think it it would be mm. it will help you mm. yeah great and sometimes strength is found in submission Anyways, guys, yeah, did you sure. hear that is a, a, a tweetable quote? Yeah. Strength is found in submission. Today's topic, as you've seen down below, is very, very touchy feely but by the grace of god i am going to share what i know mm. and my wife here is going to be a support system she's yeah. she's going to support me today today she's here to support <laughs> me. um yeah. but i um i think I'm, I'm very passionate about it because as a minister i feel like i am i'm, I'm a i'm a grace preacher like i'm called to talk to people about the grace of god mm -hmm. and understanding the grace of god mm -hmm. and this channel we talk about relationships a lot and now we have kids that yeah. are going to grow up and they're going to have relationships yeah. and are going to have questions and they will need answers so yeah. as parents and as people who love god mm -hmm. we are going to share our two cents yeah yes so mm -hmm. do you want to give it a start or i yeah. just I think just get on, get on with it. Are you seeing how she I... looks beautiful today, you guys? I'm an Mimi too. Maybe it's... Maybe Trotter, not it's... a snabby cap. Anyway. Mm, I love your t-shirt. I Thank love the color. Yeah, it, it says really good on you. love yourself first. Always. Please do. Please Always. Do. Let it be Me, a mantra. I'm wearing trial match. We are, we are trying this this to see how it fits and how it works out yeah we'll give an announcement later yeah but anyways on on this topic first of all i think it is important for us to understand that we cannot talk about sexuality mm. and not talk about god mm. because god is the one who created relationships and who created sex yeah. and sex is a good thing it is a beautiful thing and everyone deserves to have love mm. in fact the bible talks about that the most important commandment is for us to love, love. one another yeah so um where do we begin um, I think I'll, I'll begin by talking about God and then I talk about us mm. and then I talk about salvation mm. and then I talk about how to live with, uh, with one another, you understand? Mm. Um, so talking about God, first of all, uh, the Bible opens. The opening statement of the Bible is in the beginning God mm -hmm. created. Yeah the heavens and the earth. The reason why that is important is that for, for us to know the reason why it is important to, important to understand that God is the creator is so that we can understand that we are subject to a higher being than mm. us. Mm. And because God is our creator, he has the right to tell us what to do. Mm. And the second thing that we have to know about God is that God is good. Mm. So in, in as much as God tells us, tells us what to do, I think we should find comfort in the fact that he is a good God and whatever he tells us to do, even though it might not look like it is something that it's good for us at the moment, mm -hmm. or it might not feel good, yeah. in, at the end of the day, it is good. good because yeah. God is good. It's good, yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. and, and this statement, good, that word good is very, very important mm -hmm. because that word good was first used in Genesis. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the first person who used the word good was God. God, truth. When he looked at Adam and said that it is not good for a man to be alone, and so he said that he made a suitable helper for him. 
And where did the suitable helper come from? God did not go to the sand and made another man like Adam or another being like Adam. Mm. He took a rib out of Adam's body and made a woman for him yeah. and said that this is your suitable helper. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah. So that was the first time that word good was used. And even though God was the first person who used that word good, there's another person who used the word good in Genesis. Mm. And that is the devil. Yeah. So the serpent in tempting Eve said, did God not say that it is not good for you to eat out mm. of this tree? Mm. You understand? Yeah. Because he, then he said, because God knew that if you eat of it, this tree, you will be like him and you will have the knowledge, knowledge. of good and, and evil. evil. Mm. All right. Yeah. Listen, listen to that very, very carefully. You will have the knowledge of good and, and evil. evil and knowledge, which means is so God said that it is not good for you to eat of this tree um, because he knows that if you eat of this tree, you will become like him. Mm. So you will be able to judge mm. that what is good and, and what, what is, is evil. evil. Are you understanding? Yeah. And so they ate of that tree. Mm. And after eating from that tree, sin entered into the world. Mm. I feel preaching, the, the anointing of preaching. I don't know if I should preach. But I, I, I Omega, the, the, the intensity of that statement, mm. that God looked at Adam and, and judged that it is not good for Adam to be alone. Mm. He judged that it is not good. Yeah. He made the plants, he made the stars and judged it is good. But Lucifer came and told the devil, that you, uh, told Eve, that if you eat of this tree, you will be like God, knowing good and, and evil. evil. You will be able to judge something that is not good. You will judge and say that it is good. And the scripture continues and says that when Eve saw that the fruit was good, for food, uh, she, she ate eats. of that tree. Mm. And so from then on, people have been taking things that God has not said it is good, but we have become judge of what is good and what is not. Mm. But God is always right and God is always good. Mm. So when sin entered into the world in Genesis, I want you to understand that all of us fall short of the glory of God. All of us were born into sin. Yeah. And it is it is just a thing as as long as you were born of a woman, you were born into sin mm -hmm. and you have the tendency to sin. Yeah. And all of us have one solution to sin and which is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. All of us are candidates of the grace of God. Yeah. But somehow I don't know where we got this idea that people who struggle with homosexuality do not deserve to be in the house of God. Mm -hmm. They don't deserve the grace of God. Mm -hmm. They deserve a special place in hell where they should just burn and be by themselves but that is not that is not even true like um gospel and true faith you understand mm -hmm. and so i think for us to be able to talk about homosexuality conclusively is to look at how does this thing come to be like let's go to the root of mm -hmm. it how am i doing babe? great i'm doing good mm -hmm. um there are two schools of thought that try to explain how homosexuality comes to being. Mm. And now I feel like a law student. The first <laughs> school of thought is the Nature school of thought. We mm. talks about sociology and how someone was brought up. Mm. And I wrote about this in my book, What yeah. God Says About Your Identity. And the first theory they say that homosexuality can come to being as a result of having a negative experience with people of the same of, of the opposite, opposite sex when yeah. you were growing up. So let's say if you are a girl and you saw your father mistreating your mother, or you saw your mother mistreating your father, or you got raped when you were young, or you got so heartbroken, like the way Nairobi does people, you mm. know like you get so heartbroken and you get when you decide all men I don't want anything to do with men or if you're a, a man you decide I don't want anything to do with women mm -hmm. that that can contribute to someone becoming a homosexual um, the second school of thought says that homosexuality can come to being as um, a result of having deprivation of enough heterosexuality when you're growing up. Mm. In other words, you never go to see a couple like us relating. <laughs> like you never go to see the relationship between a man yeah. and a woman mm. or the relationship between, you know, you, you get um, mm. that. That is the second. And the third one says that if you have sexual contact with a person of the same sex, mm. either wanted or unwanted, it has the effect of changing your sexual orientation. Mm. So this talks about people who are molested when they were young. They didn't have a choice. Mm. 
someone just took advantage of your innocence and all of a sudden you're struggling with things you don't know where they came from mm -hmm. that is a theory and then the last one is very interesting it was a research done by a doctor called dr storm in 1981 and in his research he said that children between the ages of 5 and 13 are in what he calls a homo social stage mm -hmm. where the girls are playing with the girls, girls and yeah. the boys are hanging out with the boys and if you're seeing hanging out with a girl if you're a boy other boys will tease you like, yeah Yo. what are you doing mm -hmm you get that sort of thing and he says that it is during this time that your sexuality is coming out so when your sexuality is coming out guess who you're hanging out with if you're a girl you're hanging out with girls if you're a boy you're hanging out with boys so the first people you talk to about your sexuality mm. if you're a man is you talk to men mm -hmm. and if you're a lady you talk to to ladies so he was trying to say that because of that it can have the effect of you know you becoming homosexual mm. because it's like you begin to share your experiences and exploring certain things you know mm. um something like that then the second school of thought is the nature school of thought which talks about biology and basically it says that you can be born a homosexual mm. and that is the thing that people in the church do not want to hear mm. how can you be born uh -uh. no you cannot be born but it's actually in the bible like so that's chapter 20 the bible says you uh, think chapter 20 verse 5 or chapter 5 verse 20 the bible says that you shall not bow down to them neither worship them for i am a jealous god visiting the iniquities of the fathers to the th sons mm to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Mm. Which means that there are certain things that you struggle with, not because you had anything to do with them, but because you were born in a certain bloodline, it mm. just becomes a thing. Mm. You get. Um, the other school of thought, I was trying to find the scripture. Oh, thank you. Um, the other school of the, the the other scripture that we can use is like a story like Abraham. Mm. Remember Abraham went to Egypt and he was asked, Who is your wife, Sarah? He said that Sarah was his sister. And I actually want to go to heaven because of two reasons. One is because I just want to look at Eve badly. And number two is because I want to see Sarah. Mm -hmm. Like I just want to see this woman who at 80 years old went to Egypt and the king was like, you. Ah, so it's Exodus 25. Exodus 20 verse 5. Yeah. Thank you so much, babe. You get... um. And, and Isaac, uh, Abraham was asked, who is your wife? He said, she's my sister. Mm. Then his son, Isaac, went to the house of Abimelech. He was asked, who is your wife? He said, it's his sister. Mm. And out of that lineage, Jacob was born, who is referred to as the master trickster. Yeah. So you can see like there is something about genealogy. David actually writes in the Psalms and says that for I was born, I was born in sin and shapen in iniquity. Mm. So all of us, as long as we were born out of a woman or out of a man, like we were born from man, all of us are candidates of sin. Like all of yeah. us are just born into sin. Mm. And all of us need salvation and need redemption. All yeah. right. Yeah. So that is what we have to look at first of all. Um, so um, because people don't want that story, like in church, when you tell someone, hey, me, I was born, hey, you cannot be born gay. They almost make it look like it is a choice. Yeah. You chose it. Mm. But it's not true. Because even me, like there are certain things that I struggle with, but I can never say that I chose those things. Yeah. I didn't choose them. Mm. Like, like for example, when um, like I, I don't want to share my my laundry or to air my laundry, but don't. um, <laughs> you, you get like there are certain things you don't choose. You mm. just grow up. Like you think as a boy when you are like four years old, do you think that that now or five years old, do you think it is your choice to look at a girl and feel some type of way? It is. It is not your choice. It is just a natural thing that happens. Mm. You get like you remember when we were talking about. I don't know what video we were talking about, but we were saying that kids, you don't have to teach them how to lie, mm. but they will just find themselves in a situation and they will lie, they will lie yeah. without anyone teaching them. Yeah. Because sin is in us. Like we yeah, are born with the natural it. tendency. We gravitate towards sin. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You understand that? So when we look at people who are homosexual, first of all, we have to look at them as children of God. Mm -hmm. Number one, that is plain and Paramount, simple. Yeah. And by the way, not just children of God, mm -hmm. but image bearers of God. Mm -hmm. Because all of us were made in the image and the likeness of God. Mm. So when you're relating with a person, you don't start by relating to them like a TCG. You, you relate to them as image bearers. Mm. You know why God said that you should not kill? You yeah. cannot kill because God did not want anyone to take away his image. He's mm. the one who made that person in yeah. his image. So you don't have the right to, to you know, to, 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 to take a life that it is God who gave. Yeah. So as when, can you imagine how beautiful it would be if we were looking at other 
other people as image bearers first. Mm. Like you see them and you see that this person is yeah. the image of God. Mm. But the world has pushed uh, homosexuals to a point where I feel like them becoming even a community was as a result of feeling like they don't belong. Yeah. You get. Mm. But they, they, they should feel like they belong if we genuinely had love and as the church if we genuinely had love then they should have felt like they belonged mm. and the question is is your environment a safe space for people to come out wow. and to share their struggle mm. because the problem with us is we like to categorize sin mm-hmm. but do you think the devil cares what type of sin you do Sin matters. It doesn't. Is sin. sin is sin. It doesn't matter what type of sin you are doing. Just sin. Mm. You get as long as you're sinning, the devil is happy. But we like to consider ourselves more righteous by looking at other people and judging their struggle. Mm. Forgetting that even you judging someone based on your you you thinking you're better than them is still unrighteousness because it mm. is self-righteousness, which is also a sin. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So I feel like the reason why this homosexual sexuality thing is exploding is because first of all, like people have not looked at those people with love. Mm. Like, have you allowed them? Is this someone can come to you and talk to you about it and them not feeling judged? Mm -hmm. But you know how the church responds to people who are homosexual? If we don't talk to you, if we get to talk to you, we will preach to you the gospel of heterosexuality Mm. and the gospel of marriage. Mm. So I like how Jackie Hill Perry puts it, by the way. She said that we have promised people homo- heterosexuality as if God has promised them that. <laughs> so instead of preaching the, the gospel of Jesus yeah. and, and, and preaching the genuine gospel that has the power to change people's life, mm. we are preaching a gospel to people that will make them behave and act in a way that will make us feel comfortable. Mm. Wow. And so there are people who are homosexual, but they have hidden in church because they thought that acting straight is them being saved. Jesus Christ. But that is not what genuine salvation is. Mm. You understand? And so because we understand that, yes, there is a model, there is what God wanted us to be. There is a way that God wanted us to live. Mm. But the reality is, are we all living the way God wanted us to live in Genesis chapter mm. 1? Mm. No. But we have categorized people out of the, from the LGBTQ community differently than people, like than all the rest of us. Mm. Um, Jackie Hill Perry again. Sorry, I'll refer to her. And if you are by the, yeah. interested in learning more about um, this whole thing, just listen to Jackie Hill Perry and this, I've forgotten this other pastor that I, I, I was listening to who was talking about it but Jackie, Jackie Hill Perry gives a very good testimony um, yeah so um, Jackie Hill Perry actually said that as a pastor people would come to you and tell you that oh Pasi, please pray for my child you know my son looked at this boy mm. and said that he's attracted to the boy please can you pray for my son because I want this spirit to go away because it's bad mm. but you'll never see a parent coming to tell you Pasi, please pray for my son yesterday he was looking at this little girl's butt and he said that he's attracted to her please pray pray for him mm. no no one will come to tell you that because to them it is natural mm. for you to be attracted to a person of the same sex, opposite. as if uh, of the opposite sex, as if lust is still not a sin. You wow. get uh, so th- that that is the reality. Mm. Like even think about it when we when we when we preach to people who are homosexual, we tell them that come into this our our faith, God will change you. Mm. He will He will take away those desires. Mm. You will not desire those things anymore. I know a person who was just like you. Then they got they they, they got saved and they got married and now they are happily married. How do you know they are happily married? Mm. You understand? Like so, we tell them like come, God will take away those desires. But that is not the truth. God is not going to take away those desires. But then let me tell you something. When you give your life to Jesus, your spirit is saved, but your body isn't. Mm. So you're still going to be tempted by the things that you are still being tempted by. Mm. The only thing that changes is that you have a relationship with God. And the closer you get to him, you will begin to love him more than what you are tempted by. Mm. 
And so it's not like at when you come to God that those desires are going to be taken away. No, you are still going to struggle. But the way you struggle is going to be different mm. because now you won't be struggling from the point of like you have no control, you have nothing to, to, to anchor yourself on, but you will be struggling from the point of you know that you are forgiven, mm. that you are saved. Number one, salvation is in two folds. Salvation is we are saved yeah. and we are being saved. Yeah. We are saved is that we are saved from the penalty of sin, which is death. Mm -hmm. Because for the wages of sin is death. Jesus came and took that penalty. He died so that we don't have to pay that price. So even now, let me, the reality is that as long as you have Christ, the penalty of sin is taken away. Mm -hmm. Being saved is we are being saved from the power of sin. Mm -hmm. That means that even though we are living in a world where we are tempted and we have issues and we have sin we are free from the power of sin we are saved from the power of sin yeah. and being saved from the power of sin is that the power that sin has is taken away from it mm-hmm. and what is the power of sin the power of sin babe is guilt mm. and shame uh-huh. and condemnation uh-huh. and and looking down on yourself mm-hmm. and feeling worthless and feeling bad so we have the power even over over sin, you understand? Yeah. So me, what I usually tell people who are struggling with homosexuality, by the way, my ministry is open, come. Mm. Because I know the only difference is that yours might be more open than others. And I'd rather, mm. I, I prefer you than someone else who is hiding what they are really struggling with. Mm. You understand? Because if we all understand that we are all sinners and we are all in need of the grace of God, then all of us would be better. Mm. And this is the reality. Even me and, 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 and even babe, like we we still have things that we are being tempted by and that we are we are being tempted by. Mm. But we know the scripture and we have the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to help us to overcome. Yeah. But the problem with us is that we have preached the gospel of behavior modification. We have not preached the gospel of the heart. Mm. So you come to church, you tell you dress like this, talk like this. Mm. You need to stop doing this, stop doing that. So you're not doing it because you have actually, uh, you have, you, you have had, like you, you, you have a relationship with God mm. and you understand how much he loved you, mm. that even in your mess, he still chose you. You, you don't have that. Like you, you don't have that. So now you're trying to save to, to, you are trying to act saved without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like you're trying to be holy without the Holy Spirit, mm. which is an impossibility. You yeah. cannot be holy without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit for us to be holy. Yeah. So we have to understand that the universe, the solution to homosexuality is the universal solution mm. to every other sin See? in the world. Yeah. And by the way, there's a book called Authentic Sexuality, which is written by psychologists, we, four psychologists and they were all be- psychologists and they were all believers. Mm. And they said in their book that it is not enough for you to be socialized into homosexuality sexuality and it is not enough for you to be born with the tendency to be homosexual Mm. and it was very profound for me by the way because there was a research that was done in the states where prison people men went to prison and they had homosexual experiences but when they come out some of them didn't become homosexual because even though they might have had the you know homosexual experiences they did not have the tendency in them for that thing to come out Mm. you understand yeah but you take a person who has the tendency, born with the tendency, and then you put them in an environment where they are socialized into it, then that thing definitely comes out. Mm. And that's why I feel like this is from a, from a logical point of view. I feel like even as, as a country, we need to review how we do high school. Like mm. I feel like we should just abolish this thing of boarding and girls and boys school. Because you can imagine a person who is, and you can think, if, if you trace back, you will notice that most people who discovered their homosexuality discovered it in the in context high in high school. Because in high school, you are surrounded. Like it is the perfect environment for your homosexuality to come out. You understand? And it's not just about homosexuality. Every other sin is if you are born with a tendency or socialized into it, then mm. it will come. Yeah, it like, will come out. Like alcoholism as well. Exactly. Like for example, like let's say a person who was born with a tendency to be alcoholic. Mm. And then you take them to a country that doesn't have alcohol. Mm. That person will never become an alcoholic. Mm. 
You understand? But you take the same person and you put them in an, in an environment where alcohol is being given for free, mm, then that person will, will, yeah. will come out. You understand? Mm. Like even a thief, like someone can have the tendency to steal. But if they always have abundance, they have no reason to steal. So the environment is not conducive for their sin to come out. Mm. But that's why we have to be very careful with the kind of environments we put ourselves into. Mm. Because the environment you put yourself into can bring out things that you didn't know existed in mm. you. Like, for example, most people who even came out as homosexuals is because they were put in an environment, they got themselves, so they had the desires. You had the desire, and then you began talking to other people, and those people told you, like, yo, come, hang mm. out with us. And the more you started hanging out with them, you discovered that you were gravitating towards it. Because the environment you put yourself into can bring out things in you that you never knew existed. Mm. So we have to be very careful with the kind of environment that we create. And that is why the devil is very keen to fight the the the... the the church in general and fellowship. So he's trying to get people to be so hard that they go, don't go to church. Yeah. To be so bitter that they don't want anything to do with, with, with church. Mm. And then put them in environments where they feel like they are being celebrated and they feel like they are being loved. But in essence, what they are being what they're doing is that they are being drawn away from God. Yeah. And I'll finish with this scripture so that we don't do a long video. And maybe next time, if we if you guys still have questions that you would like us to talk about, then we'll talk about them. Romans chapter one and I want to be able to read for us because she's been very quiet this whole day. <laughs> this whole I have talked twice. Yes, you can read from verse, I think verse we read from verse 16, Amma. It will be too long to verse 22. Which part do you want us to read? 18. Mm -hmm. Up to 24. Oh, uh, wait, let's not start from there. That, that will be too long. Um, Just read from verse 18. To where? to until i tell you okay to verse 22 i don't know just read <laughs> sorry okay so okay. it's romans 1 yes verse 18. 18 yeah for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth for what can be known about god is plain to them because God has shown it to them mm. for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine, and divine nature, nature yeah. has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world mm. in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse yes. for although they knew God, mm. they did not honor him as God mm. or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking mm -hmm. and their foolish hearts were darkened. Mm. Claiming to be wise, they became fools Ooh. and exchanged the glory of the immortal God mm. for images resembling mortal man mm. and birds and animals and creeping things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God gave up in the lusts of their God hearts. God gave them up. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Therefore, God gave them up in mm. the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to mm. the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves, mm. because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, mm. who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm. Yeah. For this season, God... For this reason, yeah? Yo, is I don't have glasses, man. Mm. For this reason... God gave them up to dishonorable passions mm. for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. Mm. And the men likewise gave up um, natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another. Mm. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty mm. for their error. And since they do not see fit to acknowledge God, mm. God gave them up to a debased mind mm. to do what ought not to be done. Mm -hmm. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness. Yeah, uh? yeah. covetousness. Okay, malice. malice. Yeah. They are full of envy, mm -hmm. murder, strife, deceit, mm -hmm. maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, um, hearty, mm -hmm. boastful, inventors of evil, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, mm -hmm. foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they do not do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Imagine. One thing that I want you to notice, um, you're cutting. One thing that I want you to notice is that when, when God was, he, the Bible says that God gave them up to their 
to their, desires. to their desires. And it says that men exchange their natural relations with men and women exchange their natural relations with women. The Bible did not call those people homosexuals mm. because homosexuality is a word that didn't exist until 1968. Mm. If before 1968 you woke up to someone and told them that you're a homosexual, they would wonder, what are you talking about? What are you saying? Because back then, men were men and mm. women were women. Because it is only now that we try to label people to label people according to their struggles. So because they're struggling with homosexuality, we make that their identity. Mm. But that is not your identity. Your identity is you're an image bearer. Mm. You understand? So this thing of, the, that is what the devil wants. The devil wants you to be labeled like that, to label you according to your sin and according to your struggle and according to what you're going through. And so that is not what God's intention is. First, you have to understand you're an image bearer. Number two, you have to understand that there is a savior there is a man called Jesus who gave his life for you. It was God himself who came and took the penalty of sin so that you don't have to struggle with it. Mm. And number three, that we have the Holy Spirit who is our helper, that even when we fall, the grace has been given to us that we can be able to rise up again. So apparently since I've barely spoken um, to do the outro, but thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a thing or two. This one was for video for enjoying. This one was for yeah. learning a thing or two. Um, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, share, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.